Hey everybody, Josh, KI6NAZ. You know, there's a lot of new hams coming out and they often will end up looking for something like these, which are ham sticks. Ham sticks are mono banded. This happens to be a 10 meter ham stick and you can get on pretty much all the HF bands with them. You just have separate ham sticks, 10 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, etc. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to tune ham sticks to get them on the right frequency that you want to operate on. Plus, we're going to talk about an antenna system that works as a dipole for wanting ham sticks because they're quite versatile antennas. So thanks for watching the Hammer to Crash Course. Let's get started. Ham sticks are pretty simple antennas. You can run them just as one vertical or you can run them in a pair as a dipole just two of each band. I'm holding a 10 meter ham stick. This is from Shark Ham Sticks. There's the black rod and then there is a stinger or the whip section of the ham stick. And the whip section screws into the top or end of the black part of the ham stick. All you have to do to adjust these is measure the stinger out and then test it. And you can use your radio to do that. Just something simple and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The first thing is we're gonna, we're gonna take this antenna and we're gonna get it away from metal objects. That's gonna be the first thing you wanna do when you're going to set up an antenna like this and tune the elements. Okay, right out of the box, there is a sticker that I like to just stick on the side of whatever mast I'm using. And it tells you the links for the stinger ends right here. And so all you gotta do is measure out the stinger mounted on your antenna system. Then we're gonna use the radio's standing wave ratio SWR meter to check and see if it's in the spot that you want it to be. Now today, in addition to the shark ham sticks, I have the chameleon spider antenna. This will run four sets of ham sticks. So I've got two pairs on right now. I've got a 20 and a 40 meter pair. I've adjusted the stinger to just the stock configuration as, as written on the sticker, and we're gonna test the SWR. Uh, note the ham sticks that I'm using, the shark ham sticks are rated for 500 watts output, which makes these a, a, a pretty decent option if you wanna do uh, portable, if you wanted to consider putting something on your car like a vertical mast, or you wanted to have something like this spider that runs as a multi-band dipole. I'm gonna go ahead and add the 80 and 10. That'll give me four bands, 10, 20, 80, and 40, which is pretty, pretty good. That's about what you'd want, at least the bands that I'm most often to use these days. As the uh, sunspots start to open up a bit more, or we, we start to get uh, more intensity from the sun, you may wanna pick up some of the higher bands. So not just uh, 10, you may even wanna add six, uh, 15, and run that way. Now be careful when you're removing the plastic. These do come with an Allen key and they each come with one. So you're gonna have more than enough Allen keys here pretty soon. Uh, make sure you hang on to it though, because you're gonna to want to adjust the set screw on this stinger. That adjusts the horizontal length or vertical length if you're running it vertically and changes your SWR where the resonance point is on the antenna. And again, my pro tip is take this little sticker, add it on your mast or on your bag, wherever you're gonna use the ham sticks is a good reference point. And you may wanna go and adjust these to, you know, depending on if you wanna run on the single sideband portion of a band or you wanna do digital, you're gonna vary them slightly. Now you might be thinking to yourself, how is it that these are all the same length, but you've got 80 meters like this one that I'm screwing in right now? Well, the wire, the physical wire is running along the black part of the antenna and it is kind of in a corkscrew and then there'll be sections where it's extremely tightly wrapped and, and that's what they're doing. So for 80 meters, here's your 20. On 80 though, it starts here and it runs all the way to the end. So that's gonna make the antenna extremely high Q and high Q means that the bandwidth, the usable bandwidth is gonna be tight. So these are inexpensive antennas and obviously they're, they're for convenience. Some of the bands are gonna work a little bit better, the higher side bands, your 10s, your 6s, that kind of stuff. 20 works really well too. When you start getting into 40 and 80, that bandwidth starts to tighten up on you. So you kind of need to pick which side of the band you wanna use and then stay around there. Yeah. 
Something to note that the, uh, the 10 meter ham stick, the black portion is the same length, but the stinger is a, is a bit shorter, I've, I've noticed. So if you're balancing this out, remember they're gonna be equally opposed. And again, I'm using the, ca the chameleon spider multiband dipole for these. And every one of these taps are color coded. So for instance, I've got the 10 meters going into the black uh, heat shrinked color coded area. There's a yellow, blue, and a red. We've got this thing fully loaded. I'm gonna take my measuring tape and I'm gonna measure out the pairs on the stinger. So 10, I'm gonna measure with the other 10. I want them to match. That's the first most important thing. And then I'll do a sanity check against that sticker and I'll adjust as I need to. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them right out of the package, measure that they're the same, and then I'm gonna test it on the radio. And the reason for that is most of these stickers, again, that the ham sticks come with is gonna be for using them as a vertical antenna. But we're using them as a dipole. So I wanna get that baseline first, check where they're at, and then adjust as I need to. Hey everyone, hope you're enjoying the video. Wanted to let you know that Gigaparts is doing a special deal for my viewers on these this antenna system. If you put the Spider from Chameleon Antennas antenna in your cart, along with their bundled four hamstick pairs, some shark hamsticks, which gets you 10, 20, 40, and 80 meters, you'll get a discounted price. And then if you add the coupon code Josh at checkout, you'll get an additional 10%. And I'll be doing a future video with the spider specifically and the hamsticks out in the field to show you what they're capable of. But I've used these in the past. Hamsticks are pretty well known, good antenna. So if you're interested, take a look at the link. Thanks. I realized while I was shooting those outside scenes with the antenna that I wasn't able to show you a good enough example of, of how to do the tuning or to where to find the sweet spot for the antenna. So we're on 10 meters, I'm, I'm inside now, I've dragged the radio inside and I've got some long coax running out to the antenna. So here's what you do. You, you need to pick a mode like FM or AM or RIDI. So RIDI generally works pretty well. And, it, and you've got an S meter here, right? You've got an S meter on your radio that's gonna display the SWR. So if I key up, it's gonna show you where the S meter, uh, the SWR is just a little over two to one SWR. ICOM has a mode here called meter. It just gives you a little bit different view. So there's there's a little over two to one. So if we scroll down the band, so the let's let's go to the, the technician portion and right about right about there, right? And if we key up again, it's dropped now. It's gone down to two. And if we keep going, now it's 1.5. So there's a, there's a dip to this antenna, right? There's like a, a bowl shape, an upside down parabola. You want the frequencies that you're gonna be talking on, so let's say it's 20, 28,300 and, and up. You want the dip to be somewhere, you know, maybe about the 28,400 for you technicians, or just wherever you're gonna talk. Because some bands are extremely wide frequency um, space, and you, you need to pick the part that you want it to be the most effective in. This is particularly true with 80 meters. Uh, 80 meter ham sticks have a high Q, meaning their bandwidth is more narrow than this 10 meter option. So then at that point, you take the set screw and you go in maybe half an inch, use a tape measure, go in half an inch, maybe a, a full inch, and then come back and test again, just key up with um, RIDI or some mode. And then when you're done, you know, you wanna make sure you go in there and say Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, testing, just to drop your call sign. That's pretty much all you need to do to test these. Now, that is uh, the, the brute force method. I would still argue getting yourself a nano VNA or a proper antenna tuner is gonna make the whole job easier because, and, and I'll show you that right now. Let me grab an antenna tuner. Let me hook up the antenna to it. With an antenna tuner, you get an immediate kind of response to, well, where is the antenna resonant, right? Where, where do I want to be? Where am I going to be talking to? And, and, you know, where is my SWR range? So we'll go scan SWR. We want to be on the 10 meter space, which is nine. And we're going to come way down because we know that's not even in the ballpark. So we'll go right there and we'll run it. So the lowest dip is actually under the ham bands right now. It is at, uh, what is that? Let, let's find where the lowest spot is. You can see how it's starting to dip, come up and away. So we haven't found the, the slowest or the lowest point yet. So 
So actually, 27422 is where the antenna is resonant right now. And sure enough, that's about right in the middle, 27.422 megahertz. So if we wanted to get this into 10 meters, we'd actually need to shorten the elements to go to the right, and you lengthen the elements to go to the left. So ham sticks are incredibly easy to use. You just have to make sure that you're adjusting them lengthwise appropriately. Again, if you want the frequency to go up, you need to shorten, and if you want the frequency to go long, you need to lengthen. That's, that's basically the whole, the whole deal with, with using these, and, and you've got a couple of ways to do it. I love uh, antenna analyzers. I think this is the first tool that a serious ham interested in antennas should, should get, or really just a, a ham who's starting to play with HF. You're going to find a ton of value from an antenna analyzer. But at the same time, I appreciate that those are certainly not cheap. There are people that argue you should spend half of what you paid um, on your radio on your antenna analyzer, which at a certain point there's a kind of a diminishing returns factor. But again, you know, so see, so there you go, two, uh, two to one, a little over two to one SWR. So that's still usable, but if you want to get every little bit of power out of the things like QRP radios, you owe it to yourself to move the frequency space appropriately so that you're using all that RF power effectively. That would be my argument. Let's do the final tune on these 10 meter ham sticks. Grab your cottage cheese container that you've emptied out and throw all your random miscellaneous stuff on your workbench. Get out that Allen key that came with the, with the ham sticks and loosen the two set screws that attach to the stinger attachment. Loosen them both up. Uh, not too much because then they get too easy to slide in and out. You may have some issues with uh, measuring. So I'm basically a little past 28 inches or so on both of them. I'm going to drop them about uh, half an inch, three quarter of an inch. Whoop. <laughs> Go ahead and loosen it up and then start bringing that in a little bit. Find where you need to be and then make the other side match. You can eyeball it and then give it a final measure. That's really all you need to do and then make sure you tighten up those set screws appreciably. You don't have to torque them down anything hard or anything like that but just make sure they're pretty tight. If you remember we were too low on the band. The 10 meter band we were outside of it actually. The resonant spot where that dip was was way too low. So we need to shorten the stinger and make them match on both because these are dipoles and then again just tighten them up and bring them back onto the antenna and then check the SWR again. Let's see the results. Back on RIDI we're just there at the technician and we're keying up at about 1.5 to 1 SWR, which is not perfect. And we adjust down, it goes up to 2 SWR, meaning we, we know where the left side of the bowl is, go to 400, 400 kilohertz, and uh, it gets even further. So this was centered on 28,400 megahertz. Here's the chameleon quad. I mentioned before, right? You've got a, a red and a red. That's one side of the dipole and then you got another dipole over here. This is an all metal construction. It's waterproof, fairly heavy duty, and you've got a lug here for your SO230. And here it is with the angle iron put on. So four hex heads and two U-bolts here, and you mount this to a mast or, you know, or you had some kind of side eave mount, you could run a pole up, be able to get this off the ground. That's what this looks like. So the shark ham sticks and the chameleon quad and spider here make a good combination. Ham sticks are a really inexpensive way for those that kind of are getting new to HF radio to get up on the air relatively quickly. And there's a myriad of options, right? We obviously covered the two, the dipole, two dipole option and the four dipole option here. I do want to add a couple of things, just stuff that I've accumulated as I was putting this video together. Carl, who is the president owner of Chameleon Antennas, mentioned that with this L bracket and these U-bolts, you can use pretty much uh, just about any kind of mic cable stand that you might be able to get or speaker stand that you can find off of eBay. You just want the ones that are capped on top, uh, not the quarter 20s or anything like that, just the, the round um, you know, stand. And in fact, I, I'm just using a bit of the inner part of cardboard, the corrugated section, to just wrap around and, and add a little girth to it so that I can uh, bolt down on it. Again, you, you can figure out all, all kinds of options, but I did get a question on that, and so I thought I would answer it. Also, the Shark RF ham sticks, everything uh, higher frequency than 80 meters is gonna be slightly shorter with a shorter stinger than the 80 meter option. And you can see, 
there's are standing right next to each other. These ones are a bit taller and the stinger is much, much longer. Again, you got to appreciate what's going on here. There is a quarter wave of wire plus stinger all wrapped up in this ham stick that is what, you know, about seven feet tall, yeah, seven or eight feet tall, um, right off of the bat there. That's an appreciable amount of wire, and that's why that makes the antenna such high Q. As you start going lower that down and then all the way up to 10 meters, that opens up the, the Q, the sweet spot, that salad bowl, if you will, of resonance much, much more. So hamsticks are great. I like them for 10 meters and 20 meters specifically. They'll work for 40 and 80. You just need to keep that in mind. Also, Chameleon Antenna sells this little bracket here that will take just a hamstick that you can put right on top. This will work in a pinch too. It's got a little radial line. You can check that out. Uh, also, Gigaparts. So thanks to Gigaparts on kind of helping set this whole thing up, they have a coupon code that you can go to their website. You'll get a discount on the spider and a set of four sharp hamsticks to make your dipole set. And that will get you on the air relatively quickly and painlessly. You just need to provide a mast or some kind of structure that you can, you can bolt this whole setup to. And so that works out pretty well. So make sure you check out the link in the description because it'll give you all the details. And I'll, I'll leave you this little anecdote before I go. These dipoles work great. I've used them in the past and um, I really do like this spider and this quad is, they're both really, really well made. So this is something you can likely set up outside and you can leave it up. There are other antennas like this that take pairs of hamsticks and make dipoles out of them that aren't really designed to be outdoors for prolonged periods of time. This one though, I have full confidence that you can do that. And remember, once you get a couple of hamsticks, there's all kinds of options that you can do with them. You can put them on a mag mount for your car. For those that are looking to get into HF mobile, a hamstick is the way a lot of people start out. Just one on 20 meters, one on 40 meters, you leave them in the trunk, you just take the stinger out of the body and leave that in there, and, and that's all you need. It, it's, it's very easy to get on the air with hamsticks. And as the solar cycle starts to work its way up again, you know, those high bands are gonna be fantastic, 10 meters, 15, uh, 17, all of them are gonna be, and 12 of course, all of them are gonna be great and you're gonna be able to work a ton of contacts with just simple hamsticks like this. Anyway, tell me what you think about the Heart Shark hamsticks and the Chameleon Spider and Quad in the description or if you own them, tell me your thoughts, I'd love to hear it as uh, I think they're a pretty cool little piece of kit. Take that link in the description, it'll take you to the Gigaparts website where you can get a deal, it's a coupon code, and that deal will allow you to cut some of the price of it and you can get this full setup and you'll be ready to go. I am Josh, KI6NAZ, if you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, click subscribe because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and if you click that bell, You'll get notified every time I post a video or I go live. All right, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later. See ya.